In this video, we're going to try to figure out how much force is required to stop a 1500 kilogram car initially traveling with a velocity of 5.5 meters per second in a distance of 30 meters. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to combine kinematics with Newton's second law of motion. To begin, let's draw a coordinate system so we can see what's happening within this problem. So let's assume our car is initially traveling in this direction and it's going to come to a stop. In order to stop a car moving in this direction, we're going to need to apply a force in the opposite direction. So there's going to need to be a net external force bringing this car to a stop. Now one of the things that Newton's first law says is that forces cause objects to speed up, slow down, or change direction. And Newton's second law says that forces cause objects accelerate in the direction of the applied force. Now in this case, the acceleration is really a deceleration. We're going to be slowing the car down. So the force is going to be acting in the opposite direction of the initial velocity of the car. Now we're not given the acceleration of the object in this case. We're given the initial velocity, which is 5.55 meters per second. The final velocity is going to be 0 meters per second. The car is going to come to a rest. We're not given the time it takes to stop this object, but we are given the distance over which the objects should come to a rest, which is 30.5 meters. And using this information, we're going to find the acceleration of the car. Now we're going to have to use our kinematic equations in order to do that. Now, one of our kinematic equations says that the final velocity squared is going to equal the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the change in distance, the distance over which in this case this object could be slowing down. Now our final velocity is zero, so we can get rid of that. And when we do that, we get zero equals our initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the change in distance, the distance over which this object should be slowing down. And now we can mathematically rearrange this equation to solve for our acceleration. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract our initial velocity from both sides of this equation. And when you do that, you get minus v initial squared equals two times the acceleration times the change in distance, the distance over which this object slows down. And now we want to get acceleration all by itself. So what we need to do next is divide both sides of this equation by two times the change in distance. What you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other side. And what you should see is this two cancels out with this two, this delta x cancels out with, with this delta x, and then you get an equation for our acceleration which equals negative v initial squared divided by two times the change in the distance. Now what happens when we plug in the values that we're given is we get negative 5.55 meters per second squared divided by two times the distance over which this object's going to slow down, which was 30.5 meters. And when you plug in these values, you get an answer of negative 0.5 meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. So if we look back up here, the acceleration here is going to be negative 0.5 meters per second. So in this case, the acceleration is as we thought it would be in the opposite direction to the initial motion. So in this case, what you should see is that the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the initial motion. Now, to find the force required to stop this car, if we slow it down at a rate of 0.5 meters per second per second, you add up the forces acting, in this case, the x direction, and that's going to equal the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object in the x direction. Now there's one force acting in the x direction, and that's the force required to stop the car. In a later video, we'll discuss that the force really stopping it is going to be the force of friction. Now in this case, the mass of the car, we said, is 1,500 kilograms, and the acceleration is negative 0.5 meters per second squared. And when you do this out, you get a force of negative 757 newtons, and this is the force required to stop the car. Now if you look back up here, Notice that our force is pointing to the left, indicating that the force is going to be applied in the direction opposite the direction of motion, which is, in this case, 757 newtons. Now, an interesting question that we can ask from this is, what happens if the initial velocity is doubled? So what happens if v initial, instead of being 5.5 meters per second, is 11.1 .1 meters per second? That is, it's going to be doubled the initial velocity that we started with. So if we did this out, what we would find is that the acceleration is going to be equal to negative v initial squared divided by two times the distance over which we're going to stop this. So let's assume that we can stop this over the same distance, 30.5 meters. Then what we'll do is we'll get negative v initial, which is 11.1 .1 meters per second squared, the entire term, divided by two times 30.5 meters. And when you do this, you get an acceleration of negative 2 meters per second per second, or negative 2 meters per second squared. What you should notice is that this acceleration is four times the acceleration of the initial problem. 
So doubling the velocity quadruples the acceleration over which the object's going to come to a stop. And what you'll see in a moment is that that quadruples the force required to stop the car. So if we apply Newton's second law given this acceleration, so add up the forces in the x direction, equals the mass of the car times the acceleration of the car in the x direction, what you'll see is that 1500 kilogram car is going to require four times the force to stop it if you just double the velocity of the car. And so when you do this out, you get 3000 newtons, including the direction, which works out to be about four times the force required to stop the car with half the velocity.